Okay, so we had steady state diffusion. Um, what if it's not going to be steady? What if that concentration um, changes with time? Well, if we have non-steady state diffusion, then we have to go to fix second law. Um, and the big thing here is that this is not a solution in and of itself as much as it's an equation we're going to have to solve. Now, luckily for you in this class, things are not quite as terrible as they could be. Um, we'll be solving this most often um, numerically rather than having to do some crazy integrals. Not always, sometimes you have to do you know, some sort of equation solving. Um, but in this class, you're not gonna have to do any, anything too crazy. Now, one other thing about this equation is that it assumes that our diffusion coefficient is independent of concentration. That doesn't change based on the concentration. It's not always the case, but it'll always be the case for this class. So let's say right here we have some bar. Some bar, and it has some copper atoms in there, just a few. Um, and then we put a lot of copper atoms right at the surface. Well, what is it going to be like diffusing into this? We've got a lot at the surface. And originally, it goes down to pretty much zero initially. But over, you know, a long period of time, well, the concentration, you know, in here is going to increase because it gets more copper atoms. And it's going to keep on increasing all throughout. And eventually, I will reach a steady state um, diffusion coefficient. But that's only eventually. As you can see, this is slowly moving up until it's going to eventually reach a straight line. So we have to look at this and we have to figure out some boundary conditions. Well, at time equals zero, our concentration within it is going to be equal to C naught, whatever the initial concentration of copper atoms is in my bar, from zero to infinity. At time more than zero, well, our concentration at the surface is going to be equal to whatever this surface concentration of copper atoms is, and it's at x equals zero. And then for everything else, c equals c naught for x equals infinity. Sorry, for all the times, c equals c naught for x equals infinity. So it goes to zero once we get to infinity. That's really far out, so it's usually happen. But for some large objects, infinity can, we can assume infinity is like a, a, a finite number. Now here is the terror. When we want to have these solutions without having to do any integrals, we end up running into this ERF function, the error function. This is something you have to look at in your book, okay? You have to look into your book to be able to solve this. Because this right here is something that you can calculate. If you know a particular position and a particular time, you should be able to calculate that. And all of that's equal to Z. Or you might be given the concentration at a particular point in time, as well as the initial concentration and the surface concentration. In that case, you should be able to calculate what this whole value is, irrespective of what's inside of it. And there are tables in your book, table 5.1, where it gives you values of z and the associated values of the error function. So based on what you know, whether you've calculated the error function, you can then get the value of z. Or if you've calculated z, you can get the value of the error function. You can go back and forth. Back and forth. Now, I know this is not necessarily the easiest thing to visualize, so I will be doing an example of this in the um, example video. So go look for that one, it doesn't make sense. But the big thing is you're gonna either know this or you'll know this. And because of that, you can solve using the tables to translate between them. If you know this, solve for earth of z which is just this whole thing you can call it we'll call it big x right now you're going to solve for the big x and you're going to use your tables to figure out what z is okay that'll let you figure out what z is however if you know the other if you know this information solve for z and then that'll let you get big x from your tables, which is, you know, I'm just going to replace this with a big X. And you can solve for everything else. So you go one way or the other. 
So that's it for this time. Thank you for listening. Be on the lookout for that example video to help you out with that kind of process because the equations aren't terrible, but getting used to using the error function tables can be a bit of a pain. So I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.